Welcome to Our Future, a presentation of the Sectoral Review. This is an opportunity for the Vancouver School Board to talk with the public and hear people's feedback and opinions on how should the school district provide moral stewardship of public education and assets now and into the future. The Sectoral Review was born out of the school closure process. In June of 2010, 11 schools were identified for closure and in, through October that was refined to five schools and then in December of 2010 the senior staff of the school district recommended a moratorium on school closures and to initiate a process of a sectoral review. In February of 2011 the sectoral review was defined by a senior management and the overall question asked was what programs and opportunities do we need to provide now and into the future. We began by dividing the city into six sectors. Uh, this allowed us an opportunity to explore the opportunities and programs and challenges in each sector of the city and each one represents the actual catchment areas or families of schools for about three to four secondary schools. In April and May of 2011, we began our consultation in the central sector. We presented a report to the Board of Education in June of 2011 and then launched into a process of the development of an online resource which is called ourfuture.vsb.bc.ca. In January through March of 2012, we continued to refine our online presence and we provided opportunities for consultation through social media as well. And in March of 2012, we culminated with a report on the sectoral review. The main points of the sectoral review around the process are that this is a system-wide analysis of the district, its programs, its facilities, the demographics, and our connections with the community. The online presence we designed was a one-stop shop for information about our schools and our links to the community. The online presence was also the beginning of rebranding our online presence as a resource. And it was a systematic gathering of all the data we owned was a major driver of the sectoral review. So as a result of that process, we ended up with a report and part of the report was an analysis. The product of that analysis was to acknowledge we are certainly a district of shifting demographics. We are a district with an aging infrastructure and we are a district that prides itself in our educational programs and in the choice we offer. These things we believe to be true. And as a result of this, there are some implications. For our shifting demographics, our student populations are not where they once were and the types of supports and interventions that are needed for our students and our community are diversifying. We are needing to adjust the demands of our growing immigrant population and these adjustments don't include just how we support students but the families and the broader community as well. We have an aging infrastructure. Our buildings are fundamentally unsustainable. We would require almost one billion dollars to revamp only the most needy 48 of our 110 schools on our seismic high risk list. To put that in perspective, even if we could do about three schools per year, it would take us about 20 years to complete our seismic mitigation program. A recently completed report called our Comprehensive Audit on Facilities quoted that the total cost of full upgrades to all schools is nearly 1.1 billion dollars and this means that a seismic only program would still not address about 400 million dollars of other important repairs that would need to be postponed. As a result of our shifting demographics our population is simply not where it once was and the diversity of our community has changed dramatically over the past 20 years. We're expanding choice. Our public has demonstrated time and time again that they demand choice and we've met this demand. Our programs are popular and we suggest that we continue to expand our individual and choice programs. Overall we're in a, an era of declining enrollment. Despite being a growing city there are fewer children of school age. This isn't just a Vancouver issue, it's a provincial, it's a national phenomena. The above factors were looked at by PricewaterhouseCoopers when they came to do an internal review of the Vancouver School Board and they felt 
in their analysis that there were 8,442 empty seats, or about 340 empty classrooms in Vancouver as a result of the declining enrollment. And finally, the sectoral review was born out of a board motion and senior staff direction. The sectoral review supports our strategic plan as a district. It is comprehensive and it provides a foundation on which to build. And the report and its recommendations can be, if chosen, a roadmap for the future of the Vancouver School Board. So in the report, there are some main themes, some suggested future directions. These future directions were really com compartmentalized into about three categories. That we continue our rich history of choice and we expand our offerings. That we align our efforts to ensure that our services are not duplicated and that we reduce overlap and work to be efficient and sustainable. And finally, that we embark on a public consultation process to discuss the future directions suggested in the report and the challenges and the opportunities that exist. So setting the stage for a public presentation, what we wanted to do was to tell people um, what This portion of the presentation is about setting the stage for people to express their opinion. We wanted to suggest that we will likely continue to expand our programs of choice or specific courses. We will continue to work to align our efforts to be as efficient and sustainable as possible. But we want to speak to the public about a repurposing of schools. What are they now and what could they be? Here are some expansions of programs of choice examples that have happened in the past two years. We have added Mandarin Bilingual. We have board authority courses where every year the board will approve individual courses, things like Greek or anything tailored to a specific school or teacher's interest and ability. We have added an Aboriginal focus school. We've expanded Montessori. French immersion continues to be tremendously popular and every one of our secondary schools has a mini school. We have 22 mini schools overall in the district with 18 secondary schools. So there are implications to consider about expanding programs of choice. We want every neighborhood school to be a strong, vibrant, great school. So we wonder what impact does expanding choice have on every neighborhood school. We want to align our resources and our efforts. Some examples from the past two years, we're looking at hybrid secondary and distributed learning programs where we're bringing virtual learning into our secondary schools and even to the elementary schools to wonder how we can blend programs to meet the range of learners. We want to look at how our English language learners or English as a second language services overlap with our international program. How can we streamline our services there? We have recommended that we centralize purchasing in the district as a way to be more efficient. We've looked at centralizing banking so that our services again are coordinated and aligned and if it's efficient as possible. Even on the recruitment side we're looking to move to online hiring and recruitment to stop using all the paper-based methods that we have and to reach out to a broader audience. So repurposing schools, what does that mean? Given our populations and our overall excess capacity in some areas of the district, how might we revision schools so that these critical public assets remain in service of public education but still allow us to deal with our issues of empty seats? I want to show one example just as an illustration and that is Garibaldi Annex, Begbie and Nelson. This map shows the location of Nelson and Begbie's catchment on the east side of Vancouver. Zooming in on the next map, we've added in Garibaldi Annex to show where it is located. We've added road indicators for Hastings, Trans-Canada Highway, First Avenue and Commercial Drive so that you can see where these schools are located. The borders and the shaded areas in represent the catchment areas of these schools. These schools have enrollment that where students attend programs there and they have an overall capacity which is the total number of students that a school could hold and then the space indicates how many free seats would be available should the schools be at full capacity. So in Garibaldi you can see we in September 
of 2011, we had 71 students in enrollment in a school with a capacity of 159, so 88 spaces. And you see how the other schools look as well. So in this small area of the city, we have about 782 students enrolled and about 1,098 seats for capacity, so we have space for 300 more students. So where do these students live? Using again a similar map, each dot represents a postal code for a student who attends Garibaldi Annex. There may be one or more students in these postal codes, but the dots represent where the students reside who attend Garibaldi Annex. One factor we need to consider is our seismic mitigation program. In our recent comprehensive audit of facilities, Begbie is listed as a high-risk building. The comprehensive audit breaks the school down into blocks, and both blocks are listed as what we call H1, the most vulnerable structure at the highest risk of widespread damage or complete structural failure in the event of a seismic event. Nelson has three blocks, high, high, and medium risk. So overall in this area, we have three schools that serve their community. The children in these schools are in danger in the event of a seismic event. We need approval from the Ministry of Education to proceed with these capital projects, which are large in cost. At Nelson, we are proceeding with a plan and have ministry support. At Begbie, the plans are pending and we're waiting ministry approval. But what we need to show to the ministry is that we're dealing with our capacity issues to get approval for our seismic upgrades. We need to show the public that we care, we listen, we do not want to close schools. We need to show that we're exhausting all possibilities and we're thinking outside the box that we call a school. Repurposing is a brainstorming with the community and partners about what options exist for our schools and our public assets. It is not a precursor to closure. It's an opportunity to think of things that may be possible. What if our schools continued to educate, but in different ways? One example is here is a district where they've looked at a school and repurposed it in an urban farm center. In this case, on the United States, this center is going to create an ecosystem of food from the very beginning of its production stages all the way to consumption at the table. It talks about a production of food, the preparation, the distribution, and the consumption. Here is a different view of the school and its repurposing. And it has kitchens, it has hydroponic farms, it has cooking classrooms, it has nutrition labs, it has a farm-to-table community kitchen and urban gardens. You can see that this is truly something that is a very different concept of what a school could become. This school even has a produce store and a farmer's market. Other examples can be found. Schools repurposed as community centers, medical clinics, post-secondary institutions. The picture of the artist's in rendition on this slide shows an affordable artist housing that was created in New York out of a school that was, or was closed a long time ago. Vocational training centers. Possibilities abound for these important public assets. The most important thing we want to consider is how do we have these assets continue to contribute to the public and yet not be disposed of to private interests. So the question is, if we completely rethink what a school looks like and functions as, what challenges does this present to the existing community? What opportunities are created? How do we continue to be moral stewards of these important public lands of assets while we provide quality education in the future? If you want more information about the Vancouver School Board, our challenges and opportunities now and into the future, visit our website at ourfuture.vsb.bc.ca.